Hey everyone, and welcome to WitCode, where in this video I'm going to be teaching you about the CSS position element. So the position of the element says how an element will be positioned on the screen, and then we use top, bottom, left, and right to specify where we actually want the element. So for example, here you can see I have three boxes, an orange box, a blue box, and a green box, corresponding to these here. And I also have a class for each of them, which is box, which gives them a height of 150 pixels and a margin of 10 pixels on the top and bottom, and zero on the left and right. Now, as we haven't added any positioning, what you can say is that this is just following the normal document flow. So for example, we have an orange box, a blue box, and a green box. The blue box is below the orange one, and the green box is below the blue one. And what this means by normal document flow is basically there have been no CSS styles applied. So we haven't applied anything position. So let's use Control shift j let's open up our dev tools, and let's go to Elements. If we inspect down here, click this tool, hover over each of these divs, click on it, and then let's go to computed for the styles that have actually been computed. Let's show all of them, and let's look for position. You can see that it is positioned statically. And so what static means is it's positioned relative to the dot, or in a normal document flow. So orange will be above blue, and blue will be above green. So now let's say we want to change that. Say we want to move this box to the right by 50 pixels. Well, what we would do is we would specify left, and then 50 pixels but you can see nothing has happened. That is because due to the position being static, it won't respond to left, bottom, right, or top properties. And if we want it to, what we can do is we can set the position to relative. And now you can see it's moved to the left 50. So now that our position is relative, we can actually use the bottom, right, top, and left properties. And so what relative means is relatively to where the object, where the item would be in normal document flow, move it by 50 pixels. So for example, in normal document object flow, this item would just be right here in this position. So let's move it left 50 pixels to where it would be normally. So that's why it moves in this direction. So now let's move one of the other elements. So let's add a top property to this blue box by 50 pixels and save this. But once again, if you remember, nothing has happened. And the reason nothing has happened is because if we click on this, go to this element, once again, the position is static. And so that means the top, bottom, right, and left properties cannot be used, and it will stay where it is. So now, let's change it to position relative. And when I press save, you'll see it move 50 pixels from where it is, because it will normally be positioned here, so move it 50 pixels down from where it normally is. So let's click save, and you can see it's moved. And I believe we also changed the color here. So let's change that back, and change the position back to relative. And now, what's something we can also do is you can see these have overlapped. So the blue box is now overlapping the green one. So let's say we want to change that. Not only can you use the top, bottom, left, and right properties, but you can also use something called the Z index. And what we want to do is if we specify it to any number less than one, so let's do minus one, green will be on top. So with position relative, the items don't take up the space that is left behind when this element moves. And that's why overlapping can occur. And z-index is a property that you can use to decide what element you want to be on top. But now, let's bring these all back to normal. So let's bring them all back to static. So we do delete these, save it. You can see, once again, the position is static. And now, the next property I want to go over is something called fixed. So let's change the position here for the orange box to be fixed. And the first thing you can see is that the object is completely moved, is completely gone and these have taken up the space from where it was behind. That is because Fix has completely removed it from the document object flow, so the other objects don't even really know it's there, and they move over to take the space. But something that you also might have noticed is the box is just completely gone, and that is because divs, by default, have a display property of block, which means it'll take up the full width of the container. So this is no longer really applied when you use position fixed. So now let's specify a width of, let's say, 500 pixels and you can see that it has appeared again. And you, what fixed actually does is it positions the element relative to the viewport, which is just the browser, what you can see within the browser. So this here is the viewport. And something fixed does is it fixes it to a certain position. So let's say we want to fix this to the top. What we would do is let's add something called top, and let's do zero. And you can see it moved, but it hasn't moved this. And that is because also by default, if we go over to this body element and click on this, and we do margin, you can see that it has a margin, left, right, top, all that have been computed to be 8 pixels. So if we go up here, 
and change body. Let me change the margin to be zero. Now you can see that it has become flush, but there's still more. There is still more margin here, and that is because of our class here. So for the orange box, let's add a margin top zero. And now it's fixed to the top. And so what fixed really does is it fixes it in this position to the viewport no matter where you are. So now let's do something by, let's change the height of the body to twice the view height so we can get a scroll bar. So now we have a scroll bar and you can see when I scroll, it's fixed no matter where we are. So it's fixed to a certain position in the viewport that you specify. So for example, now let's say instead we want to fix this to the bottom. What we would do is instead of top zero, let's specify the bottom to be zero. And now you can see it's in line with the bottom and we scroll, it's fixed there. So what fix is usually used with is with navigation bars on a website or something like that. And also, say you go to a website where you only have a limited amount of time to view things. I don't know if you've ever had that where an ad pops up telling you to sign up and then when you scroll, it's still there no matter what. That is usually used as fixed as well. So they would position it in the center of the page. So let's say we do bottom 50%. And now where we scroll it, you can see it'd be right in the middle. And if we had content here, then it would be blocking it. So once again, let's take everything back to the default position of static. So we have everything back to the way it was in the beginning. And the next property I want to go over is absolute. And what absolute is, is it basically does the same thing as fixed, except instead of relative to the viewport, which is just the browser window that you can see, all this here, it is to the nearest parent element that is positioned. And what position means is anything other than static. So you have actually set the position. So let's do something with orange. Let's change the position to be absolute. Once again, you can see the same thing that happened with fix is that it's disappeared. And that is because the display property of block is getting ignored again. So what we have to do is actually specify a width. So let's do a width again of 500 pixels. And now you can see it has shown up. So if you remember what we did last time is with fixed, we wanted it to be fixed to the top. Let's fix this to the bottom. So let's do bottom, let's do zero. And you can see that once again, it has moved to the bottom. However, this is different. Now let's go to body. Let's create a body tag again. And let's specify the height to be twice the normal height with a scroll bar. And now when we scroll though, you can see that it is not moving with the page. So that is one of the differences. And then something as well is absolute positions to the nearest position container. And you can see these don't have a container. They're, they are just surrounded by the body. So if there is no position container surrounding it, it'll position itself to the body, which is why it is here at the bottom. So now let's surround this with a tag. So let's create a div. And let's give this an ID of my container, just like that and now create in here. Let's set the background color to be Gainsborough. And let's set a height to be 500 pixels. So now you can see this here. However, this isn't being positioned to the bottom of its container. It is still being positioned with the body. And why is that? And that is because the parent container is the nearest positioned parent container. And if we use our handy dandy tools again, and we we'll click on this and we see the position is static, which means we haven't specified a position. So now let's specify the position to be relative. And you can see it's moved to the bottom of this container because when it wasn't relative, it doesn't have a parent element that is positioned. So it just positioned itself to the body. So now let's do this with the rest. Let's say we want this orange in the bottom left blue and the uh, green in the top right and blue in the top left. Let's how will we do that? So, what we can do is set the position to be absolute for both of them first. And you can see they both disappear. And if you remember the block property is ignored, so let's give them all 500 pixels in width. And now they're both at the same spot because the, they will be overlapping. So once again, we can use the Z index property and let's set this to minus one. And there's the blue one. 
But instead what we want to do is for the green, let's move it to the bottom right. So we're going to do bottom zero and right zero. And once again, it did it to the body. So what we've obviously forgotten here was position relative. So this is a position container now, so it'll be within this. And now let's move the blue to the top right. So we do top zero, right zero, and now that's there. So what you can think of absolute is, is you can make your own little separate window and organize things the way you want inside it. And now the final property I want to go over, so let's get rid of all these again. Now the final position that I want to go over is sticky. And so what sticky does is it moves it based on the scroll position from relative to fixed. So it's at a relative positioning and then it becomes fixed at a certain scroll position. So it's easier to show you it. So let's set the position of this orange box to sticky. And then let's specify a top property of zero. And now when we scroll through here, you can see as soon as we hit in here, it is fixed to the top of this container. And the reason is to the top of the container, fix is usually the viewport, but remember in here we have the container surrounding this box, so it'll be fixed to the top of its container. So if we want it to be fixed, for example, to the viewport, let's get rid of this container, save it, and now when we scroll, you can see it is fixed to the top of the screen as soon as it hits the scroll. So those are the position elements that I want to go over. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you, but thank you for watching.